Does the Audio-Technica AT2020 condenser microphone need 48 volts of phantom power? If it does, where does that power come from? And what happens if you don't supply that power for your microphone? I'm Jordan from Kettner Creative, and in this video, we're going to answer all of those questions for you. In this video, we have the Audio-Technica AT2020 connected to the Solid State Logic SSL 2 Plus audio interface. If you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video, please check out the links down in the description below, where we have current, up-to-date pricing from a variety of online retailers to make sure that you are getting the best price possible if you're looking to buy any of this equipment. Now, first of all, the quick answer is that yes, the Audio-Technica AT2020 is a condenser microphone and all condenser microphones do need 48 volts of phantom power in order for them to work. Basically, that power that you're sending to this microphone will charge the plate that is looking for movement from the diaphragm of the microphone, and that is how it converts acoustic energy or sound into an electrical signal for your audio interface. Now, some condenser microphones do have an internal battery that you can put into the microphone. The AT2020 is not one of those microphones, so it is reliant on an external power supply. The good news is most audio interfaces will be able to supply that power to the microphone with an optional 48 volt power supply. If you look at the SSL2 Plus, you can see that I have a button per channel that I can turn on here, and that will turn on phantom power for that channel. Some audio interfaces and some audio mixers will just have one global power supply button that will send power to all XLR inputs or microphones that you're using. So that is a nice feature in some cases, but you can risk damaging microphones if they aren't built to handle that 48 volts of phantom power. An example of this would be a ribbon microphone. You can damage an expensive ribbon microphone if you send phantom power to that microphone and it doesn't know what to do with that power. But condenser microphones, not only do they know what to do with that power, but they need that power to work. To demonstrate that, I'm just going to turn off this 48 volt power supply button on the SSL2 Plus to demonstrate that this microphone will in fact not work. And now phantom power is turned back on and you can hear what I'm saying again. So if you don't supply this microphone with phantom power, it's not like it will sound bad or distorted or low quality. It will literally produce no sound. It will not be able to pick up any sound from any type of acoustic source. So you do need to supply it with 48 volts of phantom power. Again, this is readily available on most audio interfaces and audio mixers. You just need to find the button and turn it on. Sometimes it will look like a plus 48 volt, like on the SSL2 Plus here. Sometimes it will look like a lightning bolt and sometimes it'll spell out phantom power. So that's what you would look for. But the AT2020 does need phantom power. If you have any other questions about this microphone, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. Again, if you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see here, we do have links down in the description below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.